Hi, my name is Mary Malad. I'm a research assistant at the University of Edinburgh's Blockchain Technology Lab, and I am here today to discuss statistical certainty, or the lack thereof, in mining power estimates for proof-of-work blockchains. So I'd like to just begin by briefly contextualizing our work. As you may know, and as we heard earlier, the Nakamoto coefficient is a well-known security metric in the blockchain space, often boasting to quantify decentralization. Again, as we heard earlier, at least at some level, level um, at some granularity. And it's defined as the minimum number of entities that would need to coordinate to hold the controlling majority of a resource. And as I just said, resource can mean anything from hashing power to tokens to stake for proof of stake ledgers. And this metric is used very often, and the definition is largely uncontested. However, when it comes to estimating mining power for proof of work blockchains, we found that the Nakamoto coefficient fails to have statistical certainty. That includes the inaugural work, which itself defines the Nakamoto coefficient being wrong. So the implications of this oversight could mean fatally underestimating the security risk in proof of work blockchains. Let me explain. Again, this might be a bit of old news for the crypto asset analysts, but in case there's any of us who aren't that, this is for you. Um, as a reminder, in proof of work blockchains, miners must successfully complete a probabilistic puzzle to have their transaction added to the blockchain. And the ability of miners to complete these puzzles is directly proportional to their mining power. So here we see a battery that represents each person's individual mining power. And when we look at the total power across a chain, it might look something like this. And this idea of mining power is crucial. If one person holds the majority of the power, he could rewrite the blockchain, potentially allow allowing them to spend the same coin twice, which is a serious security risk. So the Nakamoto coefficient is great because it allows us to quantify how close we are to this risk. Um, and for many ledgers, this controlling majority is 51% ownership, or exceeding 50% ownership. So if we return again to this example of the battery, here would be a chain that needs three people to work together to reach this 50% threshold, so our Nakamoto coefficient would be three. So this is great, right? We have a really straightforward way to measure security risk, a really straightforward way to calculate this coefficient, but there's one thing missing. The definition doesn't quite tell us what mining power is. So historically in research, proof of work, in, for proof of work blockchains, researchers will estimate mining power by just looking at the proportion of blocks that were mined. And very often this is done on a daily basis. Um, so let's do just that. Let's look at this first day where 10 blocks were mined. On this day, let's say that Adam and Brady each mined four of the 10 blocks and Clara mined two. Then since Adam and Brady, for example, each mined or together mined 80% of the blocks, researchers assume then therefore they must own 20, 80% of the mining power and therefore the Nakamoto coefficient is two. But if we return to this idea of how mining a block is a probabilistic process, then it's possible that Adam here just was unlucky on a certain day, and he mined less than the majority of the day's blocks when he actually holds the majority of the power. So by looking only at the proportion of blocks mined, the Nakamoto coefficient would tell us that you need two people to hold the majority of the mining power, when in reality, it's only one person, Adam. So with this problem in mind, our paper addresses the following research question. How can we evaluate statistical competence in Nakamoto coefficient estimates? And here is how we did it. So uh, just for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to rephrase this research question just a bit and instead ask, using this traditional uh, definition where we look at just the blocks mined, do the top miners in fact hold greater than 50% of the mining power? So we're going to set up a hypothesis test to answer this. The null hypothesis will be that the combined true mining power is less than or equal to 50%. And the alternate hypothesis is that the true mining power does in fact exceed 50%. So with these hypotheses, we use a binomial test <clears throat> where n is the total number of blocks that were mined in a day, and k is the number of blocks that were mined by the top C miners. So for example, if the Nakamoto coefficient was 2, like we just saw, uh, K would be the number of blocks mined by those two miners. And then we have this um, 
this confidence level alpha, which is 0.05, which is industry standard for hypothesis tests um, that we used here. And all of this will go into our binomial test and spit out a p-value such that we can reject this null hypothesis if the p-value is less than alpha. And that, theoretically, if we can reject that null hypothesis, it should mean that our Nakamoto coefficient looks like it has statistical confidence. So um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go too much into our data collection. It's a thorough and complicated process. Um, but you can find a much more thorough explanation in our paper or on our GitHub repository. Um, briefly, I'll say that we used Google BigQuery to collect historical data from five major proof of work blockchains. And obviously, for Ethereum, we only collected up until the change to proof of stake. And all of this data was collected on a daily basis. So to tr be able to translate this daily data into time series data, we use this idea of a sliding window sampling. So here, for example, this is just you know a made up situation of day one, there are 10 blocks mined, day two, there are four blocks mined. And let's say we want to look at three days at a time, four days at a time, five days at a time, so on. We'll look at this window of the day before, the day of, and the day after. And then we sum that information together. And we then would say on this first day or the second day, we have 22 blocks and 15 blocks and 13 blocks. And we're able to do this because as I mentioned earlier, we're looking at each of these days as kind of independent tests. And so it's OK that we're kind of double counting here. Um, but in this way, we can transform daily data into weekly, monthly, or even yearly data. So what did we find? So I, I blocked off part of this figure so we can just stay focused on the left side, um, which here you'll see on the x-axis is the daily granularity that our data was collected on. And then on the y-axis, we have the percentage of tests that were passed. So as you can see, using the daily data, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash fail the hypothesis test nearly 50% of the time. So this means that for this these daily blocks mined for certain ledgers, we have uncertain results of the Nakamoto coefficient nearly half of the time. Um, notably, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash have significantly fewer blocks mined per day, which is why we see substantially more um, confident results for Ethereum. And this is because of the time delay. So for Ethereum, there's two blocks or two minutes between each block produced, whereas Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash is closer to 10. So with this idea in mind, we have the law of large numbers, which tells us if we put more blocks into these tests, then we should have more certain results which is why we return to this idea of the sampling window. So in this way, we can increase the number of blocks that we're looking at and then run these tests again. And our, resu our results confirm this. So this is that same figure, just now you can see the whole thing. And along the x-axis, we have the sampling windows of three days, seven days, two weeks, and a month. And we see that when we increase the sampling window, we increase our confidence in the Nakamoto coefficient estimates. Uh, this is obviously very, very interesting because it tells us maybe that if we increase our sampling window, you know, going forward, we'll be able to have more certainty and security risk. So we can play with one more parameter with the same data, which is this uh, significance level of 0 0.05, and change it to 0 0.01, which should hypothetically give us much more strict results. We can see just how uncertain we can be, which is confirmed with this next table, its next figure. Um, and the same story holds. We see this trend uh, between both figures that around the seven day mark, you reach a point of somewhat diminishing returns um, so that the percentage of a hypothesis tests that are passed isn't increasing so rapidly as it was before. Um, but you, you do see substantial growth between the daily data to this weekly data. So going forward, all of the analysis we did from here on out, we use the seven day granularity or seven day sampling window so that we can be really, really sure um, that we're playing with the maximum level of uncertainty. So all of this said, even if we are able to reject this null hypothesis and say that the true mining power of our top miners does in fact exceed 50%, and it seems like our value is good, it seems like our Nakamoto coefficient, we should be confident in it, um, we actually can't say with certainty that we have the correct value. And this is because uh, it's entirely possible that we run this hypothesis test again with just one less miner or one more miner, and we're still able to reject the null hypothesis. 
In other words, we return to this idea of a bad day and say that even though the Nakamoto coefficient of two has statistical support, we might also have statistical support for the Nakamoto coefficient being one. So our results once again confirmed this. Here we have the statistical support for the Nakamoto coefficient of Bitcoin over the year of 2019 on the x-axis time, y-axis the Nakamoto coefficient. And again, this is using that seven-day sampling window, so we think that we should be fairly certain in our results, and we still see with the lightly colored red being the upper bound and the darker colored red being the um, lower bound, we still see that you know at some points in time there's the Nakamoto coefficient could range with statistical confidence from two to four. So uh, we, what we learned is that the Nakamoto coefficient for Bitcoin can take many values. And here is what that looks like for all of the coins that we studied. We have the five major coins across the top, and then under that column that reads direct, that's the reported Nakamoto coefficient using that traditional uh, definition. And then under the column possible, we have our, um, our results for statistical support. So we find once again that the Nakamoto coefficient can take many values. And this uncertainty matters, especially when we consider values with or uh, ledgers with low Nakamoto coefficients, like this one here for Bitcoin Cash. We see a reported value of two when it's really possible and we have statistical certainty that it could be one, which means that just one person controls the majority of the mining power. Therefore, we make a reluctant recommendation for researchers to report the Nakamoto coefficient as a range or otherwise use a sampling window of at least seven days to compensate for this uncertainty. Uh, we say reluctant because this window might be dependent, as we saw earlier, on the number of blocks, not necessarily the days. It's, it's more about the number of blocks and inc increasing um, our data for that those hypotheses tests. Uh, however, this remains uh, an open research question. So in conclusion, we found that um, aggregating blocks daily can lead to considerable uncertainty when estimating the Nakamoto coefficient and that the existing approach to calculating the Nakamoto coefficient consistently underestimates the centralization of mining power, which provides a so false sense of security regarding the risk of a 51% attack. So, however, by reporting the Nakamoto coefficient as a range, as I said earlier, or repeating or increasing the sampling window, we get closer to accurately measuring the distribution of mining power and improving our confidence in estimating security risk. Thanks.